Hey everyone, this is Corinne Lafon, your favorite radio host, your only radio host, and favorite girl, of course, broadcasting to you from the lovely island of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean on Between the Lines. And you know how I always start my show off with gratitude or thankfulness, as some people say. Uh, it's raining. It's raining, and I love the rain. It was pouring, like people say, cats and dogs. I didn't see any cats and dogs falling from the sky, but I guess it's a metaphor for a lot of rain, right? So it was beautiful. It still is. It's overcast. It's cool, and I do appreciate the rain. I, you know, I always threaten myself. I threaten myself that I'm going to run out of the rain one of these days and just run up and down in the rain, you know, like how we used to do as children. If you have ever done that if you haven't you should try it in your adult life it's kind of freaky and fun to do so i have with me somebody who is agreeing she's nodding her head with that <laughs> lynetta Heyman, and i'm going to tell you a bit about her but before that we're talking about protecting your business brand and family let me repeat that protecting your business brand and family and you might be asking yourself why would you need to do that and in what circumstances, and that's what we're going to talk about. So she's an attorney. She is a trademark and business law attorney that focuses on protecting business owners' brand and business. Attorney Heyman, or we'll call her Glenetta on my show, is a graduate of the University of Missouri, Columbia, where she earned her bachelor's degree in psychology and interdisciplinary studies. She obtained a Juris Doctor, I don't know what that means, from Arizona Summit Law School and a master's degree in forensic psychology. My goodness. As an owner of Heyman Law Office, she focuses her practice on protecting our brand, or, well, our brand, that's right, your business and your family. So welcome, Glenetta, to Between the Lines. Thank you. Thank you for that warm welcome. Yes, it is warm in this rainy Caribbean island, yes. <laughs> It's great to have you. What is a Juris Doctor, by the way? Educate us on that. Yes, a Juris Doctor is a law degree. So I went through three years of law school and obtained a Juris Doctor. Oh, nice. That's what I call it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. And forensic psychology, explain that. Yes, forensic psychology actually is the intertwining of the law and psychology. So it deals with criminals, it deals with victims, and it deals with the mindset of those individuals and why people do the things that they do within the criminal justice system. So then you should have been on the movie Silence with the Law. <laughs> kind of a lecture. You, you should, as to why he's doing the things he's doing and getting into the mind of criminals, of victims, of why they are doing the things they're doing, yeah? Yeah, I probably should have. Yeah, I'll have to speak to the directors and the movie, movie people about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I find that very, very interesting. I, I love, you know, I love to watch um, CSI and I remember there's a, a show that used to come on, they, they teach it at a university and they had it on one of those cable channels at one point. And they were showing you how they would teach the students about forensic science and to figure out what is the motive behind if it's a murder or an abduction or, you know, triangulation, how to test blood splatter. I mean, it's, I love that, just getting into the mind of, of someone. Well, I did psychology and sociology, so it, it connects. I could relate to what you're saying because I, I love to understand why people do what they do, their behaviors, their actions. What are they thinking? You know, it's, it's very, very interesting. You can never be bored with a topic like that. Nope. Never be bored. So protecting our family, our business, and our brand, why would we want to do all three of those or any of those in the first place? Yes, because all these things I found in my research, in my research is very important to business owners. So I mainly work with business owners. And when you start a business, your life essentially focuses around that business. Mm -hmm. So you're building a brand. And when you're building a brand, that in turn, of course, uh, converts into the business and your family is reaping not only the benefits, but if something negative happens in, in that business, the family will feel that as well. So 
that's essentially why you have to be conscientious of that when you are running a business or you're developing a brand because there are a lot of infringers out there. There are a lot of people um, that may become envious of you. And then, of course, there's the inevitable um, where we all pass away. And there has to be a way to protect your assets even after you're gone. No, let's go back to I'm hearing myself at home. I, I don't know why, but I think it's coming through on, on, you're probably not hearing it, but it's coming back to me. I don't know. But when you say a brand, explain to me in your interpretation what a brand is. So for business owners, layman, family, what does a brand mean? And does it always have to, protecting that brand, does it always have to mean business? No, not necessarily. So just, okay, so the world is, is vast now and we have the age of internet and everything is virtual and everyone is online. And when you're online, you're portraying yourself and more than likely you're developing a brand, whether you're just an individual lay person letting people know about some a hobby that you do, or you post pictures about your family. Essentially, you're creating some sort of brand for yourself. That's how people look at you. So what a brand is, is how one would identify a particular good or service or even an individual, um, just something to recognize them. So with my uh, brand is Heyman Law Office, and I have to uh, exemplify Heyman Law Office wherever I go online, in the store, wherever I am, I have to exemplify that brand. So how do you exemplify Heyman Law Office wherever you go? How do you represent that? Because I'm hearing you saying there must be a consistent uh, perception. It doesn't matter who meets you where. They must have that same experience perception interpretation wherever you go you're you're in the supermarket somebody meets you it's the same thing they meet you at the movies it's the same thing they meet you in the bank it's the same thing they come into your office it's the same thing so it's consistency of an image of an experience because you you mentioned technology and all of that everything now is more about actualizing that brand that it becomes real it becomes an experience. So when people meet you, they should be hearing coming out from you a particular way of speaking, language, demeanor. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking that because I'm also into branding, PR and, and, and branding and communication. So I understand what you're saying completely. But I, I want to make sure that people understand the, the, the depth and breadth of how this is and when when i mentioned to you is it limited to a business i mean even a family when a family goes out they are a brand yes. but they don't think of that the brand of Heyman, the Heyman family brand <laughs> right the smith family brand you know it, 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 when you look at jada jada pinkett smith will smith they are a brand and they carry themselves i mean they, that's a perfect example i think they carry themselves in a particular manner their children, even though their children have their own individual identities when they're out or, or whatever, they have created a brand. Will Smith and, and his wife Jada have created a brand that people know this is who they are, this is what they represent. So even if they are separate from their kids, people know this is the brand. Am I correct? Tell me. You are correct. Exactly. Hitting it right on the nail. So, so tell me, how do you represent your brand? Let's do some actual examples now. Use you, and then we can probably use one of your clients as to how you actualize your brand and protect it. Right. So how I actualize my brand is I have to go back to my core values and always have to revisit those to say, what do I want Heyman Law Office to represent? Mm -hmm. And just as you mentioned, um, I have to make sure my pillars, for example, are always in place. Like you said, when I'm in the grocery store, I, I want to come across to my customers as a person that provides a great customer experience. I do not um, think of myself as the average attorney. I want to get to know my clients. I want to get to know about everything that you do in your business and everything that you're passionate about so I can make sure I protect that. So if I meet you in the grocery store, you're going to get that. You're going to get 
the person that wants to learn more about you um, and why why you're in the grocery store. Why do you why are you buying this particular uh, type of, of brand if we're talking? And so I have to exemplify that that I, I have that interest in an individual. Um, and when clients sit down with me and they're like, hey, I have all this going on, I will actually go to their place of business to see what they're going on, going on in their place of business if it is unique. Um, and that way I get a better idea of how their customers see their business and how best to protect them, whether it's implementing contracts or making sure disclaimers are provided to clients, things of that nature. No, no, I'm here right here. And I'm thinking to myself, just like with any other business, there are a number of people offering the same type of business. There are lawyers like you around. I mean, you're probably the first one I met in this particular area. But I'm sure you know there are other people doing the same thing you do. Just like there may be a store next to the next door, there are neighbors and they're offering the same type of clothing or a hairdressing salon next to another hairdressing salon or a barbershop next to another barbershop or across the road. And you're like, how could they do it? You know, how are they managing? You have to say to yourself, what is going to make us barbershop A different from barbershop B, clothing shop A different from clothing shop B, et cetera, et cetera. Do you think that in that competitive, you're in the same industry, your com competitors, when a store isn't doing well or a business that is competing with the same type of business next to it or across from it, it doesn't matter. When it's not doing well, is it because of the branding? Is it because they haven't um, identified who or what they want to be or they want to portray? And this is why they may not be getting off the ground, um, elevating themselves, attracting the right type of people, retaining the right type of people in their business. Yes, I, I agree. I think a lot of times it is because of branding and establishing that foundation. When we start a business, it's very important to go back to the basics of what you want to represent, what you want to portray, what type of client experience you want your client to have and how they walk away feeling. And identifying that brand is very, very important. And then you develop. So yes, I agree that, that if that foundation is not set up initially, it's, it's very likely that that business would, would fail because there is no mission, there is no vision, so you can't reach your goal. Wow. I, you know, I'm visualizing these two competitors on the same street next to each other. And one is looking across the street to the barbershop across and saying, what is it that they're doing over there that's getting so many people? And you may even go across and say, what the hell are you doing over here? <laughs> you know, you're thinking, but hold on. You know, um, we, we have flyers. We're giving out flyers like they do. We have a nice... Uh, outfit of a store, you know, theirs is not that great. W what is it? And you know, it might be the most minuscule thing that you just can't put your finger on, but you know, there is a difference. You might even stop the people coming out of the store and say, what is it? Why, why do you go over there? Why, you know, to find out what it is and what they may tell you, you realize, hold on, you probably have that, or you just don't have enough of it, or you don't have it at all. Mm -hmm. That is, you know, what, what do you say to business persons? Because before you could protect something, you need to know what you have to protect. If you don't know what you have, you can't protect it. Mm -hmm. Because it can be taken away from you, from the competitors. It can be taken away because they are going to be watching you the same way you're watching them. So if you don't even know what you have, how can you protect it? What's your thoughts on that? My thoughts are that if you if you don't know what you have, you have to find out what <laughs> you have. You have to start over, um, not completely, you know, shut down your business, but go back to the basics and say, what what am I trying to get across to my customers? Why do why should they buy from me? Uh, why should they elicit my services? And if you can come up with something that would set you apart then you need to build on that. So I just think it, it really takes um, 
analysis of the situation and what you're doing because it always comes back to what the business owner is doing not what someone else is doing differently because they're unique they're going to put a spin on it in their own way but what are you doing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it might you know it might be a simple thing as a smile a greeting on the way in the ambience the 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 essential oils they're using in their store <laughs> that makes people feel relaxed. It could be the littlest thing and it may be higher price. You mm -hmm. may say, but hold on, my price is good. Why are they going over there and they're paying more? They're paying more because they get a smile on entrance. They get a follow up when it's their birthday or their, their children's birthday. They get a special gift in the mail. It could be the littlest, littlest thing, just the attention to detail, the, the, acknowledgement that somebody exists and we recognize you and we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because I heard you said in, in your business, you go a step beyond and you visit your, your prospects or your clients business to see what is happening in their business, get a better feel for it so that you understand how you can be of best service to them. You take that extra step. Awesome. Yeah. So tell us now, how can you protect, now that we know what we have, so let's say we know what we have, we are unique, we have established that. How do we go about protecting our business, which includes the brand, and then our family, who are going to be benefiting um, from this brand and the business, whether we pass on or well, when we pass on, or should something happen to us? How do we, what are the three things that you would say to someone to put in place or start thinking up, strategizing, whatever they need to do. Those three things that they need to put in place know that they should start working towards protecting their business, brand, and family. Absolutely. So three things. Um, okay, so the first thing would be research. Mm -hmm. um, even if you're within your business five years, seven years, do your research as to what the different laws are um, and get legal advice to find out if you're compliant. So that way you reduce your liability for anything happening in the future. Mm -hmm. So research, I think, is number one, because if you don't know about it, you can't protect it. So. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't want to take on that research, it's why you hire an attorney and you come in and you say, this is my business idea. This is everything I'm doing. The attorney will go in and research those different laws and things that can protect you, which contracts are stronger, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, which brings me to number two, implementing contracts within the business. Um, anytime that you're dealing with anyone at all, registering your business uh, with, if you're um, in the U.S., the Secretary of State's in your particular state, or registering with the USPTO, uh, your trademark, or uh, obtaining a copyright from the U.S. Copyright Office, doing those things with registration and, and contracts to make sure that the public is on notice of your, your brand or product, and also making sure that your clients are on notice as to what your expectations are and what their expectations are. So you're, you're making sure everyone is protected and everyone is knowledgeable. Um, and then three would be to, um, what is my third big one? <laughs> um, I guess to implement, oh, my apologies. My third is to um, implement those things that would protect your family. Mm -hmm. So your estate planning uh, or your business succession is huge within protecting your business because you're setting yourself up if something were to happen to you, everyone who is supposed to know what to do, they will fall in line and do what they need to do. There's no question, there's no fighting, and your business just doesn't, if something were to happen, just doesn't close up. And then your family is left with paying a debt rather than gaining a benefit. Mm. Is there a timeline for each one of those? So let's say somebody's now starting a business or they have been in business for a while and never really put that in place because you know how entrepreneurs are we get busy you know um, with all the running the business we don't even keep up with the cash flow the records oh to even think of legal is just like what no you know so at what 
point in the business for a startup entrepreneur compared to somebody who is established? What are the, the different points those three things can, can fit in? Right. Uh, for startups, I recommend hiring an attorney as soon as you have the idea and the passion, mm -hmm. even before you register your business, because they can do the necessary clearance searches to make sure your brand is even available. Um, so once you're in your business and you're working it and you decide, hey, I want to go ahead and trademark this, you're not getting a huge surprise that your brand has already been trademarked. So for startups, I think that consulting um, an attorney and doing your research before you even register your business or start working is very, very important. And then the second piece with the contracts and, and the registration, that should happen next after that uh, research period with an attorney. And that attorney can walk you through that. So that'd be one less thing that you have to worry about is trying to figure out what pieces of paper to provide to what clients to say what. Um, so that will alleviate a lot of time and headache and pressure. And then third, that estate planning and that business succession, I recommend once you get started, um, you know, a year or two into your business and, and you feel confident that this is going to be how you want to make your money, then put that in writing. Go ahead and establish your estate plan. If you wanted to develop a trust to uh, filter to your business, things of that nature, um, that's the time to do it when you're, when you're confident that this would be your income maker. Um, and then with the established businesses, you know, now is the time <laughs> to get these things done. Because, you know, if you haven't done your research and you're already established, you're five to 10 years in, there may be a possibility of infringement or something that you're doing incorrectly that can damage all this growth that you've done over time. So for established businesses, um, I would say one year or more, now is the time to do all of those things. Yeah, fabulous response, fabulous response. I wanna hop across to your website, Glenetta, and you can guide me, hold on one second, I'm gonna share a page here. All right, are you seeing that? Yes. Right, so you can guide us on your website here, which is quite legal looking. <laughs> it's quite legal looking. Is there anything I normally like to ask that you would like um, visitors or persons listening to this interview, or who will be listening in the future, uh, to access in terms of something that you're giving away for free um, that will be useful for them? Do you have any such thing on your website? Absolutely. In our blog section, mm -hmm. um, it contains lots of resources, and I'm constantly um, implementing new things, new resources to um, you know, give to business owners. So our checklist um, is in there, see the creative startup checklist. Mm -hmm. um, and that's for any startups uh, who have questions about what they should do within their business. And then we have a couple blogs. I have uh, a video blog that I've started um, that will link you to our YouTube page. So I try to provide content um, that is relevant. So as my clients ask questions, I try to post on my blog, but not only that, do a lot on social media with Facebook just to get those questions answered. And there's a link at the top of the website uh, for the Facebook and the YouTube if you want to gain more information. What's the difference between a trademark and a copyright? Some people tend to use it interchangeably, and I want to be able to ask that from somebody who is legal to explain it. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, a trademark, um, you register through the United States excuse me, the USPTO, excuse me, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and <clears throat> my apologies, okay. and with, with the um, trademark, what you're doing is you're putting the public on notice of your brand, your slogan, uh, your logo, and those things can be in writing, they can be a particular color, whereas copyright Copyright only focuses on artistic work, so any writings you may have, um, any books, any curriculum development, ideas that you come up with that can be tangible, written down, that's when you would get a copyright. Okay, wonderful distinction, wonderful distinction. All right, so people can pick up the creative startup checklist here. 
And do you have any books or anything that you have written or about to write? I'm pushing you here. <laughs> well, I don't have any books right now, mm -hmm. uh, but I hope to develop some sort of writing to where business owners can refer to it when they, they are developing their business. So I anticipate that maybe next year coming down, uh, but nothing right now. 2020, 2020 is a good number, 2020. <laughs> nice, great goal for 2020. And persons can contact you on your website here. Yeah, they can send yep. a message, put in what they're interested in. Yes. Get information. Do you happen to offer any um, free consultation online by chance? I do. I offer free consultations for any estate planning clients. Um, or any business law clients and you can just go on the website to book a time um, and then my assistant will get back to you to confirm that time and we can either meet in person or online via zoom nice nice just like how we're doing it here so you yep. see it can happen well this is fabulous so any final words from you Glenetta, before we close off um no, I just want to thank you so much for having me on the show. And I urge all your listeners to continuously try to grow your business, but make sure it's protected um, and make sure you're protecting not only your brand, but the business and your family, because your family will reap the benefits um, that you sow. Yes. Fabulous. Fabulous. A lot of people tend to forget about the family, get caught up in the business and just totally, you know, and it's not that they intentionally do it. I think it's, they just get caught up time. And it's amazing how time just catches up with you. You know, before you know it, as you said, you're five, 10 years in and you're like, wow, that's why you said, make sure you, you do what you have to do now. If you skip those steps, <laughs> do those three things now. Thank you so much, Glenetta Heyman, for sharing your wisdom, forensic and otherwise, your concerns for, um, the family, the business, the brand, and the individual entrepreneur in going forward to having a successful business. Thank you so much for being on Between the Lines. Thank you.